on this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, today we will be, uh, after Holy Communion, you're invited to take a sprig of rosemary and place it on the uh, cross that has been so uh, lovingly and beautifully repair, pre pre prepared for us, and uh, you're invited to do that. We had a, 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 an observance of uh, Remembrance Day on uh, last Friday of the, the Eucharist there. Next week is the Feast of Christ the King, which is the last Sunday in the liturgical year, uh, and we move the following week to uh, the first Sunday of Advent, and that's the beginning of uh, a new liturgical year. Um, if you're going to the Women's Fellowship meeting on Monday, um, then uh, please note that the meeting starts at 12, not 1 p.m., uh, and it will commence with a Eucharist celebrated by the Reverend Ann Watson, and uh, you're invited to, uh, to come along to that. Um, the market day is next Saturday, and uh, if you can help setting up or taking down, your help would be greatly appreciated. And then on Sunday the 4th of December, we meet as we do regularly for our monthly dinner at Terrible Bowling Club, and this one will include um, uh, some thank yous to all of those who have worked so faithfully as volunteers throughout this, uh, this last year which again, like the last few years, has uh, been somewhat interrupted in various ways, but uh, we're very grateful for um, the people who continue very loyally their service. We have beautiful flowers here today that were uh, prepared by um, Jan Bolte. We had a wedding here yesterday, and um, uh, they certainly added to the, uh, to the beauty and festivity of the occasion. Are there any birthdays or celebrations today? I invite you to spend a moment in silent prayer as we wait to receive God's grace in the Holy Communion.
Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in all ways. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. source of peace, 
We pray for all who serve in the defence and police forces of this land. Give them courage and comfort in danger, patience in waiting, and discipline in the just use of force. Help us to seek for all people the freedom to serve you and each other in compassion and peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. First reading is from Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all arrogant and all evil doers will be suffered. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so they will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise, with healing on its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 98. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. With his right hand and his strong arm, pray for all him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his just deliverance in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make melody. Make melody to the Lord upon the heart, upon the heart, and in the sounds of the praise. With trumpets and horns, cry, cry out in triumph before the Lord the King. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the good earth and those who live upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the mountains ring out together before the Lord. For when he comes to judge the earth, he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with iniquity. The second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 6 to 13. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were there, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labour we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defence in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But not a, head, not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As for all these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. From the prophet Isaiah, For I am about to create a new heavens, and a new earth, the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. As we approach the end of another year, our readings take on an, ap an apocalyptic tone. There's a lot about the end times, what theologians call eschatology. This is the time of year when the lectionary invites us to explore some of these eschatological themes. And we're doing this at a time when it is anything but easy to belong to the church or to be publicly associated with the church. When I was at the Christchurch Cathedral on the Sunday that was set apart for the Feast of All Saints one year, a former bishop of this, uh, a former assistant bishop of this diocese, Bishop Richard Appleby, quoted these words of Rowan Williams. In the body of Christ, I am in communion with past Christians whom I regard as profoundly and damagingly in error, with those who justified slavery, torture, or the execution of heretics on the basis of the same Bible as the one I read, who prayed probably more intensely than I ever shall. How do I relate to them? How much easier if I did not have to acknowledge that this is my community, the faith that I hold along with them. I do not think for a moment that they might be right on matters such as those I have mentioned. But I acknowledge that they knew what their own concrete Christian communities taught them to know, just as I know what I have learned in the same concrete and particular way. And when I stand in God's presence or at the Lord's table, 
they are part of the same company I belong to. Living in the body of Christ or in the church is in fact profoundly hard work. Bishop Appleby contrasted that with the popular understanding of the church as nothing more than a place that makes me feel cosy and comfortable. Our readings today are uncomfortable, even disturbing. They are also hopeful. No matter what we're going through now, climate change, COVID, war in Ukraine, economic problems, the future will ultimately be good. There's also a challenge not to be deceived into placing our trust and in our security in anything impermanent. The Temple of Jerusalem represented the sacred life of Israel. The citizens of the city were justifiably proud of it. So St. Luke tells us, after one of Jesus' teaching sessions, some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. The temple represented beauty and grandeur and power. What's Jesus' response to this? As for all these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. All these things that you see. Anything we can see, hear, touch, taste, and, and so on. In other words, the things of this world is finally inadequate as a source of ultimate security. Naturally, Jesus wants to know, when will this all take place? And that's a question that has intrigued people since time immemorial. What does the future hold? One answer was given in the song Doris Day made famous. Que sera, sera. What will be, will be. You know, that's a sweet song. And it was a great movie it came from. But ultimately, that's not much help. Jesus replies in a way that urges the disciples not to get caught up in speculation about the end or to get taken up or taken in, I should say, by those who seem to have the future all mapped out and can tell you when it is going to happen and what it's going to be like. He says, beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, then the end will not follow immediately. And then he said to them, nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. Jesus is warning us not to invest any sacred meaning in these cataclysmic events. That's what religious people have been doing for centuries. Jesus says, don't get caught up in all of that. These things, wars, earthquakes, plagues, and so on, they will happen. This is the world we live in. Don't get caught up in a culture of religious violence, whether it manifests itself as physical or psychological violence. For it was that culture that made suicide bombers and that put Jesus on the cross and still looks for a sacrificial victim or scapegoat. Ap apocalyptic language in the Bible is not about predicting the future. It provides a way of seeing the future. Look around us at all the challenges and wars and environmental problems, and the future looks pretty bleak. Scripture invites us and provides a way for us to imagine a different future that is not merely a continuation of the present. It's a future in which God finally gets what God wants, which is ultimately what we all want, peace and harmony and unity. The apocalyptic, language, the apocalyptic writings use extravagant and allegorical language to describe the indescribable. And that's a reason we worship the way we do. What we're about here transcends the ordinary. 
so we use extraordinary means to celebrate and communicate. When we're talking about God, we need a new language. Everyday common speech is inadequate when we're speaking of God. So let's not be coy about using ancient poetic ways of speaking and rich symbolism in our worship. What you see and hear and experience here, the music, the readings from an ancient book, the symbolism, the gestures, the clothes, is strange and odd and out of kilter with what you see and hear and experience out there in your everyday lives in the world. There is a dislocation between ap apocalyptic language and the way we normally speak, just as there's a difference between poetry and prose. So, as biblical scholar John Barton notes, when the scripture says the stars will fall from heaven and the sun will cease its shining, the moon will be turned to blood and fire mingled with hail will fall from the heavens. We don't expect the next phrase to be the rest of the country will be cut, partly cloudy with scattered showers. <laughs> now, over the last few days, if you go out at night, we have seen the phenomenon called a blood moon. We know now, thanks to science, that the reason that the moon, that the moon turns this vivid, quite inspiring and unsettling uh, colour is because of the alignment of the, the, the sun and the, and the earth and the moon. And we know, according to science, that's why it happens. Imagine in a pre-scientific world that you looked up one night and saw that the moon had changed its colour. You'd think, oh, this is it, this is curtains, this is the end, this is the end of the world. What we believe about the end, and certainly what we read in apocalyptic writings, gives us hope, and that affects how we live in the present. Our vision of the future gives us courage to live in the present. Jesus tells us not to be concerned. There's a time of night between midnight and dawn when people despair, says Anatole Goyard, in intoxicated by my words. We are promised a new heavens and a new earth, which still lies in the future, and yet also invites people to participate in that future now. Glimpsing the future, we can face present problems and challenges and heartaches because we know who has the last word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. together in the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was deprived of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified and lost his life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with his creatures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in 
one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the Church. Hi God, before we call, you answer. Before we speak, you know our needs. Hear the prayers we bring to your people. We pray for the peoples of the earth, for a world where the hunger, hungry are fed and the homeless are housed, where the oppressed are set free and the dispossessed return to their land, where children can grow up in safety and all your people live in security and peace. Holy God, you can make all things new in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for your holy Catholic Church, for a servant church where power and privilege hold most way, where none is excluded from your table and vision replaced by unity, where hearts are set on fire with your love and your gospel is proclaimed in sacrament, word and deed. Holy God, you can make all things new in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those with whom we share our lives, for a society where the young are nurtured and the elderly honoured, where the newcomer is welcomed and diversity embraced, where all are cared for and wealth is shared and all your people receive just reward for their labour. Holy God, you can make all things new. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in trouble and need, for a new earth where sorrow gives way to delight and mourning to joy, where fears are allayed and pain is eased, where the suffering are comforted and those who are dying live in dignity and peace. Holy God, you can make all things new in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died in faith, for the whole company of the saints in heaven, for those of this parish and all whom we have loved. Work your new creation in us that we may be made anew in your likeness and bring us with all your saints to share with you in glory. Holy God, you can make all things new in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayer. Grant that what we ask in prayer, we may have your grace to see through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In spirit, the peace of the Lord be all.
are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty, our joy, and our salvation that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is the true High Priest who has freed us from our sins and made us a royal priesthood to serve him, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying. A 
As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray.
this table you graciously feed us with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have reached out our hands to receive this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth in our lives. We who have seen the greatness of your love see, <coughs> see you face to face in your kingdom and come to worship you with all your saints forever. Most loving God, you send us into the world of your love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit.